Agriculture Students Association of Naglin Khan, Pra Aji, November 2 Din, Daikin Laga 50 Years Jubilee Manaishi, Multi Burbasol SAS Medzipemade. Special guest Madagyantan, Agriculture Laga Advisor, Program De Kutagura Homoi, Students Kun Agriculture Puriase, Daikin Ge, Kali Keti De Nuhoigina, Laboratories Debi Lage Gushe. Program Laga Second Session De, Renowned Naga Entrepreneur Dean Jun Bra, Daikin Laga Journey Share Gurisha. I bid a lot details. So. When I look back and try to remember the days of Assam during my college days, that is uh, when Assam was about maybe 15, between 15 to 20 years of its existence, Assam was one of the most powerful association among the students' association within our state. And I believe, and also, I would like to state here that among all the uh, technical students' association, I think ASAN, if I'm not mistaken, ASAN is the only association which is a registered society, right? President? I think all the other technical associations, they are not registered under the Society's A, but only ASAN is a registered society. I'm, I'm really overwhelmed by the fact that all, all the ASAN members, irrespective of age, irrespective of status, everyone came in, everyone contributed like anything. And today, we had a budget of about 16 lakhs. Initially it was 20 plus, but with the uh, advice of our senior members, we scaled it down to 16 lakhs, between 15 to 16 lakhs. And today we are quite comfortable with our resources. And that is how we are able to celebrate today's event. Furthermore, Assam and our community is very, very blessed because we are celebrating this 50 years jubilee with the blessings of five of our ASAN members sitting there as elected members in the state legislative assembly. And that is a very, very big achievement and a very uh, a, a huge blessing for all of us. Well, ASAN was establishing as it was uh, already uh, read out, 1974, with Dei Ao as the first president of Assam. Then, it was Nasaf. When uh, first uh, established, it was Nasaf. But, uh, because that has, uh, uh, we were over review with some other uh, cessation, uh, national and uh, and his best administration was there on Haiti, 
That is why in order to the words that our have used, we have made it prove uh, Assam was probably in uh, 976. To win that time, I was uh, uh, vice president again. Then, It was turned over to Assam, me, I needed the certainty things. When I was most probably very taught to survey to a work of revision, class pursuit carried too far, and, and that. Second is, uh, Mrio Modi, most probably. And then Assam Jamir was then a general secretary, their side, and then got corrected. That's how Ma. It went on, and we had M's and objectives, but it's to be done. Why Hassan was uh, established was that to foster moral and social development and host agriculture students studying in different universities throughout the country. In the one, then number three is to preserve the value of honesty and then it did also die for. Print third one was encourage education to enhance technical competency. ICR has recommended three tier system of agriculture. In that three tier system of agriculture, they put up a pyramid as a symbol. So in the pyramid the top part will be covered with forest. Below that forest, horticulture or plantation crops can be cultivated. Below that, terrace cultivation with fishery, piggery, duckery, all this can be there along with human settlement. So if we follow that, and if it is possible, one or two persons cannot do that, but like-minded agricultural graduates. If you have the zeal to do that, you can start with and then transform the hilly logs that we have into cultivation of horticultural crops like pineapple here, like in Mexico, and then vegetable cultivation, different types of food crops depending on the climatic suitability of the particular crop, all the hills can be transformed into uh, horticulture, uh, vegetable cultivation, spices cultivation, and so on. Personally speaking, like any other, I was an eager student with dreams of getting into service and contributing to the agricultural landscape of our state. Those were the formative years that shaped not just my career, but also my perspective on life. And little did I know then that those experiences would serve as a foundation for the contribution I made while in government service, and later as elected member of State Legislative Assembly with the responsibility of the Department of Horticulture during the last term, and now the Department of Agriculture during the current term. Agriculture is not merely a profession. It is a vocation, a calling that touches the essence of who we are as a people. As student of agriculture, each one of us holds a responsibility that goes beyond personal achievement. We are charged with the task of uplifting our farmers, safeguarding our environment, and fostering innovation to ensure that agriculture continues to be a source of hope and prosperity for generations to come. Over the past 50 years, the Agriculture Students Association of Nagaland has been the forefront of promoting this vision. It has nurtured many young minds transforming students 
into leaders, scientists, entrepreneurs, and policy makers. It has been a crucial platform for advocacy, promoting the importance of agriculture in Nagaland. By instilling leadership and professionalism, the association has contributed significantly to the growth of our agricultural community. As alumni of ASAN, it fills us with pride to see how the association has not only endured but grown stronger with each passing year. ASAN has truly become a bridge between integration and practice, inspiring students to take bold steps in agriculture and contribute to the betterment of farmers and rural communities. It is your energy, ideas, and passion that will shape the future of agriculture. We need young minds not only in the fields, but also in research laboratories, startups, and policy-making spaces. I encourage you to explore agri-body entrepreneurship and work towards sustainable farming practices that benefit both our people and the environment. At the same time, no individual or institution can achieve meaningful change alone. Collaboration is the key. I urge ASAN to continue building bridges between the government, research institutions, farmers, and entrepreneurs. Together, we can address the need of our farmers, promote innovation, and ensure food security for them. Let us take a moment to envision the growth genesis of our association. Fifty years ago, a group of visionary individuals, fueled by passion and a shared dream, laid the foundation of this remarkable platform. They saw a future where students could unite to learn, collaborate, and drive meaningful change in their agricultural landscape. They planted the seeds of hope and commitment. And today, we find ourselves reaping the bountiful harvest of their vision, a vision that continues to inspire us. This hydroponic, hydroponic farm, it has much potential in, this, uh, in our area also. Since our area, we might we might have a bigger space, or like we, we are good in this agriculture farming and everything, but year by year our soil is degrading. That, that one I think we can all agree about that. So there will come a time when we cannot use our soil. But in fact, we have to over fertilize our soil, and that will lead to the duration of our soil. So before that is too late, this, is, this one is from apart from this uh, hydroponic. So before we reach that stage, I think we can all join our hands together and work something for the betterment of our this soil health also. That is one. And to conclude, to conclude this, I will give you a quote, okay? So this will imply to everybody, not only agriculturists, but everyone present here. So give brain, don't quit. Miracle happens every day. Never stop believing. Brave with persistence. God is working and things can change very quickly in your life. For God works in a mysterious way. Keep faith and trust in Him. Thank you. Know what you're learning in the classroom, you can actually utilize it to enhance cultivation practices in the farmer's field. So consultancy services is also one you can think about once you graduate in your specialized field. Since I am from the background of agrochemicals and pest management, I'm usually called for pest management uh, uh, things in the farmer's field or in nurseries. You want to, if I start something and I was, if I see my neighbor is doing something else, I want to do that also. But I would like to remind you all, please be consistent. If you have an idea, work on it sincerely with commitment and then do it with perfection. But I would say entrepreneurship is not as rosy as it looks from outside. Many people tell me, oh, I love your life, the way I see you travel, you know, I envy you. I said, 
it is good to look only from outside. Because I am awake before any one of you are awake. And I'm still awake when you all are sleeping. We have to burn the oil from both sides. Without sacrifices, it's not possible to succeed. And sacrifices in many ways, even in our social life. When I was, uh, you know, uh, establishing myself, I lost a lot of contact with my friends also because I didn't have time to get together, hang out with them, you know, because I was busy trying to sustain my enterprises. I have to work hard. So that commitment is needed. So today, what are the possible opportunities of entrepreneurship in agriculture? And mind you, entrepreneurship is not about wealth distribution, or accumulation, sorry. It's about distribution. When you are an entrepreneur, you don't think about earning money for yourself, but you're also thinking about fellow people who you can employ and also economically develop each other. Some of the things that you can do is farming, like one of our co-speaker has shared how he's doing hydroponics. That's also a very innovative way. You can do poultry, dairy, you know, vegetable, flowers. Floriculture is a very lucrative uh, venture. It's a million dollar business. And Nagaland, we do not come in the pie chart also. Maybe on paper we do a lot of things, but in actual we are not. In Northeast, Assam is one of the leading uh, producer of loose as well as cut flowers. And I always tell my fellow uh, flower growers, we need to do better. Because we are blessed with so many uh, climatic zones, we can grow almost all the crops that are required for cut flower market. Like in Dimapur, you can grow tropical. In Metsapima, Zabza area, different. Then in Kohima, Mogokchong, you know, Woka, so we can grow all the varieties of flowers that are required for the floriculture market, actually. And when people do it, it's actually in very good uh, you know, quality, A-grade, because our soil is also very fertile. So these are the things that you can do. Or you can do product marketing, like wholesale, retail, you know, uh, agent, or even transporter. You can have a refer van and transport the flowers from the uh, farmers to the market. Or you can have a, you know, if you feel that some of the food commodity that is produced in Nagaland, for example, pineapple. There's a lot of demand for pineapple because of the less fiber and the sweetness of our pineapple here. If you can tie up with some people and export it, you know, or storage, like I said, call rooms, warehouses, that's also a business. Or like I said, consultancy services. What are you good in? Are you good in IPM? Are you good in soil? You know, soil testing is also very important when you're going to grow crops. Most of us, uh, we Nagas, uh, we just invest without thinking, even for food crops and anything. When people are doing in large scale, we think that we can do it and we just start. But we need to check, we all know as agri students, we need to check the EC, pH, soil conditions and everything, whether that soil is suitable for that crop or not. So those kind of testing centers also you can open. Then input marketing, like you can open a fertilizer, agriculture, chemical, or seeds distributor, machineries, animal feed. So these are the things that you can do. Or processing, food processing. Or you can go into research and development. There are lots of indigenous food and you know, other things that you can work on and make it commercial instead of uh, getting the hybrids into the state. Uh, my enterprise is called Root on Roof. And in 2019, after my graduation in um, July, with the full support of my parents, they asked me what I wanted to do. And if they, uh, if they wanted to do my masters or if I, yeah, so I told them I want to do farming only. So I didn't know how to go about, I didn't know where to start, but they were uh, very supportive and told me to choose one, uh, one, one project first, and I did my research, and I came to know uh, about uh, an auntie in Dimapur, Auntie Lucy, who was already into dragon fruit farming, and since she already had that experience of starting a farm, establishing it, and, and marketing it, doing it so well, I went to her and asked for uh, her advice and consultation, and so she helped me establish my first project in 2019, in October, 
exactly five years back, and uh, we started that. But uh, with after establishing that in um, uh, here at a farm in Rasapama, just about about ten minutes from here, so. The dragon fruit farm was established. We started with 200 plants. And I realized that it was high investment. We needed a lot of money for farming. Farming needed a lot of money. So just that starting 200 plants, uh, posts, it, uh, the cost was about 2 lakhs. And the fruits, for the fruits to bear, it would take at least two years and in the waiting period, what would I do? I didn't want to burden my parents anymore for investment and finances. So I decided, ah, I really want to do farming, but I have to train and equip myself with practical knowledge so that I don't have to waste money on in experimenting. I was looking for farms where I could go and learn and train and you know, ultimately come back and start my own. So that year, I was um, exploring opportunities. And the following year, in in February, I got the chance to intern at a commercial farm in Vietnam. It's a large-scale commercial farm where they grow vegetables. And I was there at the farm for about six weeks. And um, I came back at the start of the lockdown, the COVID in, 20, in 2020. So I had to come back. Since I had come from a foreign country, I had to be locked in my uh, room for about two weeks. And while I was there, equipped with this um, uh, with so much of knowledge, experience, I just couldn't start something. I, I just wanted to start something, but I had to be locked in that room. And my farm is actually here at Reza Pema, but I had to be stuck in Kohima. And so as I was there thinking, reflecting on the past experiences, I looked out and I saw this space uh, from my balcony. It was the rooftop that was lying vacant and empty. It was underutilized. Nothing was there. It's, uh, there was nothing. It was... Yeah, so you'll see the side. There was like this, just nothing was there. So, and you know, Kohima, it's so cramped. You hardly have any space to uh, garden. There's no ground space. So I thought, okay, let me start there. And as soon as I finished my quarantine, I, um, uh, yeah, I, we made some uh, boxes. Yeah, we made some uh, just wooden boxes out of scrapes. And then we made some boxes and we uh, fetched some soil and started planting. We planted just about anything like tomatoes, chilies, beans, uh, peas, anything that we could get our hands on. We just tried and it did so well, surprisingly. But came July, August, the rains came so heavily and all of majority of my plants just like were wasted. I could not harvest my tomatoes. A lot of my uh, uh, vegetables started rotting and so uh, my mom and I were just talking, oh, we have to put up a structure on top to, to protect our plants. So, yeah, so this is the next slide. I'm just telling my story, yeah, uh, like that. I just, mm. So we put up the structure, uh, yeah, uh, and um, yeah, we put up the structure. And after that, since we've already started like planning, we thought we'll plan the beds also properly. And so we made some uh, raised beds whole concrete raised beds, uh, properly planned. And we did a lot of research online, inspiration from Pinterest, watching YouTube videos, and just about anything that we could, uh, I could get our, uh, my hands on, like uh, successful rooftop farmers across the globe, how they... Um, uh